Yo, what's up guys? So moving on to the next example, we got to graph this polynomial function. So negative 2 times x plus 2 squared times 2x minus 3 to the power of 3. And I kept the same template for these six steps that we've been using in previous videos for graphing. Now what's unique about this polynomial function that we haven't seen yet or that we haven't graphed yet rather is this bracket is to the power of 2 and this bracket is to the power of 3. But we're going to go through the same steps and you'll see how these brackets affect each step and finally how they affect the graph. So the first thing to find is the degree and the way we do that is we take each x in the bracket to the power of whatever it is, so these two x's are to the power of 1 and then we take those x's to the power of whatever the bracket is. So the first bracket is x to the power of 1, and that is to the power of 2. Then this uh, x is to the power of 1, and it's uh, to the power of 3. So then multiplying these exponents here, so we'd have x2, x3, and then since we're multiplying two exponents with the same base, we add the exponents here. So this would be x to the 5. So we know that the degree of this polynomial is equal to 5. Now notice how I only included the x's and I didn't put whatever leading coefficients are in front of the x's in the brackets because the leading coefficients we're going to be dealing with in step 2 which we can start right now. So the leading coefficient, the way we find that is we take any number that's in front, so this negative 2 and then we take the leading coefficient of each bracket and take it to the power of whatever that bracket is to the power of. So the leading coefficient of this bracket is a 1. There's a 1 in front of that x. And that's to the power of 2. And the leading coefficient in this bracket is 2. And that's to the power of 3. So simplifying this, we'd have negative 2. 1 squared is 1. And then 2 to the power of 3 is 8. So the leading coefficient here is going to be negative 2 times 1 times 8, which is negative 16. Moving on to step 3, the end behavior. We know that the degree is odd because it's a degree of 5. Leading coefficient of negative 16 is negative. So an odd degree, a negative leading coefficient, we know that the end behavior of a polynomial function with those characteristics is going to be from quadrant 2 to quadrant 4. Step 4, finding the y-intercept, we plug in 0 for all the x's. So let's uh, rewrite this. So f of x equals the negative 2 in front. Sorry, so negative 2. 0 plus 2 would just leave us with 2, and that's to the power of 2. And then 2 times 0 is 0, and then 0 minus 3 is negative 3, and that's to the power of 3. So then simplifying all this, negative 2, 2 to the power of 2 is 4, negative 3 to the power of 3 is negative 27. So multiplying all these out, negative 2 times 4 is negative 8, negative 8 times negative 27, that would give us positive 216. So 216 is our y-intercept. And now finally to find our x-intercepts, we plug in 0 for y. So 0 equals negative 2 times x plus 2 squared times 2x minus 3 to the power of 3. And then same thing, even though that these brackets are to the power of other numbers, we have to find out when do each of these brackets equal 0. So when x is equal to negative 2, and 2x minus 3 equals 0. If we isolate for x, we would get x is equal to 3 over 2. So the x-intercepts are negative 2 and 3 over 2. Now, because these brackets are to the power of numbers other than 1, we say that this x-intercept is negative 2 with an order of 2 because it's to the power of 2. And this uh, x-intercept of 3 over 2, this bracket, is to the power of 3, so we would say it has an order 
of 3. And we'll go into more detail about how these orders affect the graph in step 6. But uh, the thing to take away from step 5, whenever you have brackets to the power of numbers other than 1, the x-intercepts are always going to have an order of whatever that number, whatever that bracket is to the power of. So now to graph it, let's use parts 3, 4, and 5. So let's label the x-intercepts first from left to right. So negative 2 would be here. And then 3 over 2, which is the same as 1.5, would be over here. And then let's label the y-intercept of 216. Let's say that it's up here. So this is... Uh, 216 over there. Now this graph is not to scale. If it was, this 216 would be a lot higher, but I made the graph like this so it could fit in this area. And before graphing it, let's label these end behaviors. So reading from left to right, we know this polynomial function is going to start at quadrant 2 and it's going to end in quadrant 4. So let's graph this now, and this is where we're going to learn something unique about graphing in terms of these orders. Now this negative 2, this x-intercept, has an order of 2 because this bracket was to the power of 2. And whenever you have an x-intercept with an even order, so whether it's 2, 4, 6, whatever, in this case it's 2, graphically what that means is that the polynomial function, when it hits that x-intercept, is going to bounce off the x-axis. So it's going to get to this negative 2 and then bounce off it. It doesn't go through it like we've usually been doing in the previous examples. Because there's an even order, it means it bounces off that intercept. And then it's going to go through this uh, y-intercept of 216 and then this 3 over 2 has an order of 3 and that's an odd order and whenever you have an order that's an odd number so whether it's 1, 3, 5, 7, etc. it means it goes through the intercept, it goes through the x-axis. And that makes sense because in previous examples, these brackets would always be to the power of 1. So technically, that would, all of those x-intercepts had an order of 1, we just didn't write it down. And because an order of 1 is an odd order, it was going through the, uh, the x-axis. So as a recap of x-intercepts with an order n, if the order of the x-intercept is even, so like this negative 2, it means that graphically what happens is that the polynomial function bounces off the x-axis at that x-intercept. And if the uh, order of the x-intercept is odd, then it goes through the x-axis. So whether that order is 1, 3, 5, 7, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And, uh, and yeah, that's it. So that's how you deal with, uh, with brackets when they're to the power of something. They're going to affect your degree, leading coefficient. They're pretty much going to affect everything. And graphically, what's going to happen is these two cases.